Okay. Okay, so um, welcome back to another session of the Relaxing Fertility Yoga sponsored by the Fertility Partnership. So my name is Julie, and if you have never been to one of these sessions before, um, just to tell you a little bit about them. First of all, these sessions are for everybody, both women and men. So um, if there are any guys uh, doing this, whether um, with a partner or on their own, um, just uh, know that uh, Guys are welcome here, although I might reference the female body a bit more. Um, and these classes are particularly geared to um, people in the IVF process. Um, so these are safe, um, even uh, even if you've had an embryo transfer recently or um, at any stage of that physical process. But um, I just always want to remind you to please listen to your body. Um, so if something's not feeling right to you, um, please don't feel like you have to do it. At the end of the day, these are sessions all about how you can nourish yourself, how you can nourish um, your body, your mind, your spirit. Um, one of the most important things um, we know regarding fertility is even just this dropping of the cortisol levels. Um which actually has a scientific basis, of course. It's not just like, let's be less stressed. It has to do also with what cortisol, um, how cortisol interject or interacts with progesterone. Um, so, so it's just, again, like there are physical reasons for doing this practice. Um, but likewise, um, more than anything, um, I just... I just really want to invite you to, again, see this as a space for yourself. It's very easy to get kind of bogged down in the science of certain things or, okay, maybe this pose does this and maybe that pose does that. And, oh, I, I like, we'll avoid things like core work and um, deep twists and inversions. Um, in all fairness, though, um, if those are part of your practice, uh, if you had a yoga practice and those were part of it, um, they would still let you be doing that even in the first trimester of a pregnancy. So like we're being extra cautious. Okay. <laughs> um, and, and I just, I want always just to invite you to, to practice with a sense of, of, um, again, nourishing and even playfulness and, and gratitude for your body. Okay. So we're going to start with the centering and breathing, and then we're going to move into some warm-up movements. And then from there, we'll flow through some postures and then relax at the end. Um, and in fact, um, you know what, this week I'm not going to put any music on because um, I have a feeling my partner is going to play the guitar in the other room, so I need to keep the audio settings on zoom at the high noise reduction uh, <laughs> but if you want to put any of your own relaxing music on for the session please do and of course um if you're new to this um you might uh you might not know that i have two dogs and two cats that kind of run my life and they might run in and out <laughs> okay um, if you also have dogs and cats just let them participate how they want they often like to when you get down on the floor with them they like to get themselves involved but in all fairness um, after you start to relax so will they so um, all right so we are going to Start with a centering and breathing exercise, which you can do either by sitting up tall, you can sit onto a block, onto a cushion, um, just on the floor, or if you've been working all day at a desk, if you've been sitting and typing or just sitting at a desk or sitting in a vehicle throughout most of the day, go ahead and lie down onto your back. So you can come down and you can bend your knees and place your feet on the floor and this is just really nice for your lower back and for your hip flexors. Um, knees bent is better for your lower back, but legs extended and splayed is also great if, you're, if your lower back is, is happy to be flat out on the floor like this. Also, please do feel free to um, grab a blanket or even a, a soft uh, pillow, a small pillow that you could put behind your head. Um, just uh, as always, just whatever, whatever serves you. Okay. 
And then once you find your centering position, just take a few rolls of the shoulders. So you're going to inhale, roll the shoulders up and exhale them down and back. Again, inhale, roll the shoulders up. Exhale them back. One more. And just relax the shoulders down. Relax the hands either facing up or down. Close the eyes. And take a few deep inhales through the nose. With exhales, sighing or blowing the air out of the mouth. Once you've sighed out a few times, just come back to the natural rhythm of your breath. And notice your breath. Notice where it lands in your body. And notice what the breath can tell you in this moment about your body, about your current state of being, if you're feeling stressed or if you're feeling pretty relaxed. Whatever you find in this practice, see if you can just notice without judgment. So there's no need to label something as good or bad. It all just is. It's all just part of the now. And then from here, I'd like you to take a moment, and again, without any judgment, without getting carried away by any feeling or any thought, I'd like you to take a moment to just become aware of any inner dialogue or inner monologue that you use about your body that you would never use when speaking to somebody else. And it really can be anything. Maybe there are parts of your body that you look at in the mirror and you say unkind things internally. Maybe there are frustrations with the body. And then likewise notice any other language you might use with yourself that you would never dream of using with somebody else. And these these types uh, or this type of language often can appear as shoulds or generalizations. So I should be this or I should be that or I shouldn't have done this or I shouldn't have done that or I'm, you know, we can say really horrible things to ourselves. I'm such an idiot. Um, I'm not good enough. And Again, there's no need to judge the experience of witnessing this. But today I'd like to invite you to practice 
shifting your inner narrative so that you start to speak to your body and you start to speak to yourself like you would one of your very best friends or one of your dearest loved ones. Um, or if you do have a dog, uh, maybe the way you think your dog might speak to you. Um, and just use this as a practice. Um, and know that these practices are often lifelong. Um, but, you know, we know that plants, for example, that are identical, um, same growth stage, if you put them side by side and you water them and feed them and do all of the care instructions correctly, if you praise one plant and you actually, I mean, they've done a lot of studies about this. I know it sounds incredible and ridiculous, but they've done many studies on this. If you praise one plant and you say all these uh, amazing things to it and you tell that plant that you love it, um, versus if you look at the other plant and you tell it, I hate you, you're horrible, um, you're ugly, um, you're not good enough, um, the, that plant will start to, to not thrive. Um, and so there are things that we don't understand about energy and language. Um, and so if we want our bodies to thrive and we want to ourselves thrive, um, that's that often starts with an inside job. Um, so I just just want to encourage you to to take this opportunity to to begin a little bit or to practice that inner job right now. So starting with your breath, just deep in the breath through the nose. Inhale through the nose and take the breath down into the belly so that the belly rises with the inhale and we feel that expansion through the diaphragm. And then exhale out the nose and feel the belly fall. And just do that a few times, starting with this deep diaphragmatic breath. And then deep in the breath further, inhale through the nose, fill up belly, ribs, chest, expanding all the way up through the inhale. Exhale out the nose, chest, ribs, and belly contract. And just keep breathing deeply here, nice and slow. Inhale, expand. Exhale, contract. And as you breathe here, I'd just like to remind you that your lungs are almost like upside down tree branches. And they are these incredible organs that that just help to keep us alive in every moment. And we don't even have to consciously think about it. So maybe just take a moment to appreciate your lungs, to appreciate these upside down tree branches and the way that, that they just work so effortlessly for us. Let's take about three to five more rounds of deep, slow breath here.
And then start to mentally now ready yourself for movement. And just gently bring some movement back into your body. Let yourself stretch, roll around, yawn, sigh. Just do whatever would feel good to you here right now. And how amazing is it that you have this body that can just hear that and start to move, that you have this brain and this nervous system that connects all these different parts. All right. And then from here, I'd like you to slowly take your time and bring yourself up to a tabletop position. So you're going to come onto your hands and knees. And today I really want to do a lot of uh, chest opening, heart opening. Um, just uh, We talked a few weeks ago about this idea of, of opening up to both give and receive. Um, so, and to release so much of the tension that can really, or the anxiety even that can get really lodged into, into the chest. So we're going to come up onto hands and knees and bring the knees in line with the hips and the wrists in line with the shoulders. And we spread the fingers nice and wide so um, that we can help support the, the wrists by just having the fingers spread out. And then we're going to inhale and arch the spine. So we roll the shoulders back, open up through the chest, lift the sits bones. And exhale, tuck the chin in towards your chest and round up. Inhale, arch. And exhale, round. Do it again. All right, and then come back towards a neutral tabletop position and draw your bottom back towards your heels. Extend your arms out in front of you, taking the forehead down, coming towards a child's pose. And we just rest the forehead on the floor, relax the arms. Let yourself sigh out. All right, and then, excuse me, lift the head, lift the heart. And I want you to take your arms out in front of you. And then if you're using a yoga mat, you're going to take them wider than your mat. Otherwise, you're just taking them wider than shoulder distance. So slightly wider than that natural place where they'll fall. So you take them out wide and then cross your left hand over your right, like a cat stretching out its foreleg and relax your head down between your arms and then shift your weight a bit towards your left hip so that you get this really nice long side stretch there across the torso. And then take that left hand back and we're just going to go straight to the other side, crossing right over left, letting the head relax between the upper arms. And we shift the weight towards the right hip. Couple more deep breaths. And then take your arms out in front of you. And then from here, start to roll up. And we're just, let me say, if your floor is really hard and you're not using a yoga mat, you may want to put um, 
a folded up blanket or a towel underneath the knees here. So what we're going to do is we are going to roll up and then roll over the knees and roll the shoulders back, open up through the chest, lift up through the feet. So we take a nice inhale here, so we're going to open the chest, open the hips, open the back, and then exhale, roll it back into that child's pose. And we'll just take a few like this. Inhale, roll it forward. Open the chest, roll the shoulders back. So we're not locking the arms out, but we're really sending the pelvis forward, getting that stretch across the tummy. Inhale, and exhale, take it back. And let's do, let's go about three more. If your knees start to go wide, that's fine. It's really normal. They often like to do that. And it's, it also can feel better in some cases. Um, so just listen to uh, and allow your body to, to do its thing there. Okay, take one more. Okay, and then exhale. Start to roll it back. Walk yourself all the way up. And then draw your legs in if they've gone a bit wide. And roll yourself all the way up onto your knees. I'm actually going to grab something. <laughs> I've just been cleaning everything. And so none of the towels and blankets are there. One second, the dryer has them. It's right here. Sorry, guys. Okay, just so I don't kill my own knees. <laughs> if, rather than have a do as I say, not as I do moment. Let me, let me actually practice some self care here too. Okay, <laughs> so what I'd like you to do is come up onto your knees. Bring your knees in line with your hips. Try to stack them. So it's, nice, it's a nice vertical stack rather than a wide angle stack, okay? And then from here, take your hands to your lower back, take an inhale and send your hips, send your pelvis forward, open your chest up to the sky. Oh, and just take a few deep breaths there and you can either keep the chin into the chest or you can let the head drop back, but only if that feels okay to your neck. That is a compression of the, the neck of the cervical spine. So you may prefer, again, um, it is safer to keep the chin to the chest. All right, and then slowly start to lift yourself all the way back up, take your bottom back down. And then this time, always moving this poor plant. This time I want you to come down onto your forearms, leave your bottom up in the air. So we're going to take a puppy pose. So leaving the bottom up in the air, take the arms all the way out in front of you. Take the forehead down and just relax into that so that we're working into the upper back, into the shoulders. And if you want a little more, one thing that I like to do here is to bend my elbows and point the fingers back towards my spine. And it just gives that little bit of a deeper shoulder opener there. And if your elbows are bent, go ahead, extend them back out. And then slowly, 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 slowly start to roll your body all the way again back up. So you're coming back up into that standing position on your knees. Again, ensure that your feet, or sorry, your knees are at a nice hip distance stance here. And then we're going to take that camel pose again, Ustrasana, where we, again, really start to open up through the chest, come into this back bend. If you're feeling like you want a little bit more, you can curl your toes under behind you. Take your hands to your lower back, take an inhale, and then exhale. Send the hips, send the pelvis forward, open the chest up to the sky, and then maybe drop your hands down to your heels. 
if that feels like too much and your your body's just saying no it's okay take your hands again to your lower back and open up there okay so find what feels right to you i'm just going to adjust the screen slightly so that it's a slightly better angle okay and then pull up through your core. Inhale, lift all the way up. Exhale, unwind your toes so that the toes are coming onto the ground. And then from here, bring your big toes together behind you so your big toes are touching. And then you can take your hands out in front of you. And then I want you to take your legs and, or your knees, sorry, as wide as you can, but allow the big toes to stay touching. If they separate a few millimeters, it's fine. It's no big deal. They sometimes naturally do, but the idea is that they're towards each other and the knees are out as wide as they can go. Now we're going to come into a movement that is for releasing, um, helping to release tension from the iliopsoas muscle. And the iliopsoas is a muscle that runs from the base of your spine. It wraps your hip and connects to your femur or to that leg bone there. And if you get a lot of low back pain, this muscle can be one of the, the reasons why. Um, when we're tense, when we're stressed, this muscle can tighten up and then we can get this um, pain in the lower back. So we're just helping to uh, bring some relief there by walking the hands forward and then starting to push the bottom slightly back so that you feel a stretch on the inside of your upper thigh. And then if you feel like you can take more, Go a little lower, but the thing I want you to avoid, it, and I'm super exaggerating, but is this big lurch forward. Keep your bottom going back so you feel that stretch on the inside of the thigh. Some people will even feel this already stretching the lower back. I personally don't ever feel this going around to the lower back. I feel it more on that uh, inner groin area, but it's all working that muscle. And you can even take the head all the way down, but again, just try to avoid that, that forward motion. And just take some nice deep breaths here. and then lift the head, lift the heart, and then walk up into your hands, bring your knees back together, and slowly roll yourself one last time all the way up into a standing position on your knees, okay? And then from here, we're going to come into a third and final variation of camel or strasana, so that back bend. But if it feels like too much, or you already know that um, you need a little bit less, come into one of the previous two options, which includes the hands on the lower back or the, the hands coming to the heels with the toes curled under. If you want more still, we'll start with the tops of the feet flat on the floor, hands coming to the lower back, take an inhale, lift the hips, or sorry, what am I saying? Send the hips forward, open up through the chest, and then if you want to then take that further, take your hands down onto your heels and open up there. Now, if your knees hurt in any of these positions, take it back up to a point where they no longer hurt, okay? So if you find when you go down, your knees say no, come back up to, again, one of the earlier two that works better for you, okay? Just keep breathing here. And 
and then start to pull it all the way back up, engage with your core. And then this time, when you come back up, roll the shoulders up, take an inhale, exhale, interlace the fingers behind your back, draw down through the arms, open the chest, inhale, exhale. Hinge forward from the hips, take your forehead down onto the ground and just let your interlaced fingers hang back and away from your lower back. So we're coming right up onto the top of the crown. I'm coming onto a wood floor, so I'm just going to bring myself back and again, just pat it out so that it feels a bit more comfortable on the top of the head there. So this is yoga mudra or the symbol of yoga pose, which is so called because it brings the head below the heart, giving the heart rain. And draw your hands back down to your back or to your lower back and then unwind your fingers. Take your forehead down and just let your arms relax at your sides. And we're coming into a baby pose. And sometimes it can feel quite nice just to wiggle or sway a little bit side to side here. Just again, a little, little wiggle, a little roll of the forehead. And bring it all the way back to center. And then from here, slowly start to roll your body all the way back up. So you're again, sitting up onto your, onto your shins. Okay. And then once you're up onto your shins, I just want you to slide your bottom over to the left side. So you get this zigzag of the legs. Okay. And then take your right fingertips and bring your right fingertips down onto the floor. Take your left arm up. Oh, I got jabs <laughs> yesterday. Ow. Um, and then take the arm all the way across. Uh, so we're just getting this beautiful side stretch here. And then inhale all the way back up through center. And nothing fancy, we're just going to come up and swap it over to the other side so we get this zigzag of the legs. And again, you might feel like putting the right hand here and taking the left arm across um, seems intuitive, but again, we're trying to go for a deep stretch of the side. So we're taking the left hand down, left fingertips down, lifting the right arm and reaching over to what can feel like the counterintuitive side there. So just getting that really beautiful opener. And take it all the way back up through center. And then, or actually, either way, um, I just was, I don't know why I just did that, but what we're going to do is unwind the legs out in front of us, okay? And then I want to show you um, some, a, a, just a very gentle, safe twist that you can practice because I think sometimes there's a lot of fear around um, certain movements, particularly when we're talking about um, fertility and pregnancy and, and things like that. And so, um, it really isn't that you want to just stop an entire twisting motion of the spine all the time, because of course you want your spine to be healthy and twists are a very normal um, set of motions that the spine does. Um, and so again, we want to keep it healthy. So what we can do here is we can bend up the left leg with that right leg extended and take your left foot to the outside of your right knee. Now, in a traditional twist, we would take hold of that left knee and we would turn out to the left. In an open twist, we 
turn to the open side. So what you can do is you can take your uh, left hand onto your left foot and your right hand back. We're not sliding back and likewise we're not rounding in the spine, but we're really lifting through the chest and we can turn and look past that right shoulder here. And this is a very safe way of starting to practice some, some gentle twists. And your body can can just get the chance to <clears throat> <laughs> Excuse me to enjoy to enjoy a twist. Okay. And then from here, I want you to inhale, come back through center. And then you might hate me for this one. Sorry. We're going to take that left leg now and just let it rest on top of your right leg with the fit flex. So you're making just that flat, flat foot there, okay? Um, avoid putting it on the knee, that will be super uncomfortable. So just right out in front. You might get a little deep tissue massage with your, with your ankle there. And then you're going to, <laughs> hi buddy. Um, you're going to take an inhale, lift out tall. And then exhale, hinge forward from your hips and just start to walk your hands forward. You might not get very far. Um, we're sending the heart towards the front of that uh, fifth and we're really going to feel that into, into that left hip. Right, Elu? Right? Is that where we're feeling everything? And then inhale, lift all the way back up. And then from there, extend that leg out. Nothing fancy, we're just going to swap. So right leg coming, uh, left leg extending, right leg coming over. And then again, we're going to go to the open side. So we sit up nice and tall, and then we can take the, the right hand, place it onto the right foot, take the left fingertips back, turn to look past the left shoulder, coming into that nice open twist. And then exhale, start to rotate back through the center and same ideas on the other side. Now we're going to let that right leg just bend out to the side and we flex, um, we flex the foot and that's what helps protect the knee. We're going to inhale, sit up tall and exhale. Start to hinge forward from the hips, taking your heart towards the front of the foot. Oh. And just breathe. And then take it all the way back up through center. And then go ahead and just let that right foot slide down to the floor. And then you're going to bring your left leg up to meet it so that you can bring the, the soles of the feet together there, okay? Try to bring your heels as close to your groin as is comfortable without wrenching on your knees. So that might mean, in fact, that they're not, the heels aren't so close, or it might also mean that you want to sit up onto a prop, again, like a cushion or a folded up blanket, depending on how your back and your knees are feeling. And then we're going to interlace the fingers over the toes, roll the shoulders back, take a nice big inhale and open the chest up to the sky. So you're tractioning up through the spine. So working the hips, opening the chest, opening the back. Just take a few deep breaths here. Exhale, hinge forward from your hips. And you can either come down with a flat back, and that's better if you have sensitivities in your spine, or if it feels okay to you, you can round down, taking your head down towards your toes.
Take a couple more breaths there. And inhale, open, or start to lift the head, lift the heart. <laughs> and, hello. And just start to uh, bend the knees up. You're very excited, Luna. And, uh, yeah, you're very excited about this. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> All right. And then from here, start to bring yourself down onto your back. Okay. <laughs> Surround yourself with some fur babies if, uh, if it's available, I guess. <laughs> so I'm being told by them. Okay, and then start to bend your knees, place the, the soles of your feet on the floor at a nice hip distance stance. Okay, and then we're going to start to press through the soles of the feet, bring the arms down to the sides of your body, press into the ball, the side, the heel. And then inhale, lift the hips, lift the pelvis. So you're bringing yourself up into bridge, into Setu Bandhasana. And then we can interlace the fingers under the body. So we're interlacing the fingers, drawing the palms towards each other. And we're going to squeeze and lift there. Squeeze the glutes. And then you can also play with lifting your heels up so that you can go that little bit more into, into the pose. And that, if you can hear it, is the dog scratching around on the sofa. Let's exhale, bring the heels back down uncurl or unwind your shoulders, unwind your hands, and then draw the knees in towards the chest, hug your legs. <clears throat> Take a moment just to sigh out there. And then from here, slide your hands up between your legs and reach for the insides of your feet with your hands. So you're dropping your knees down towards your, uh, towards your ribs or towards your armpits. And then if this is enough, you can stay here like this. Otherwise, you might want to take your elbows and wrap them around to the underneath the knees, sorry, and your hands around the feet. So it's like these vines crawling up the legs. And then from here, my goodness, you can have a rock or a sway, a little play. Just starting to roll around side to side. You can also play with stretching a little bit, really working the hips there. So hips are such an important thing to pay attention to in our contemporary lifestyles, but also when we're talking about fertility yoga, um, just for so many reasons, because the hips Sorry, I feel like I'm, <laughs> excuse me, um, just because the, the hips are um, often a place where we can store a lot of tension and a lot of pent up feelings. And so we just want to give them a chance to, to clear a little bit, same way as we get stress into the shoulders and into the neck and we want to stretch those things as well. Okay, bring it back to center. And then start to unwind your legs, draw the feet back down towards the ground. And in fact, saying that about um, the neck and the shoulders makes me want to actually do something for the neck and the shoulders right now as well. Um, so actually, bend the knees, cross your ankles, and you're going to take your hands up onto your knees Tuck the chin in towards your chest and just roll yourself up to seated, okay? Um, we have done this in many classes in the past, but if you're new to this, it can feel really silly at first, um, this thing that we're about to do. 
So we're going to do an exercise that is for the vagus nerve. And vagus is V-A-G-U-S, not vagus is in what stays in vagus stays in vagus. <laughs> Okay, so your vagus nerve, your vagus nerve is part of your um, your nervous system, and it's this beautiful wandering, also kind of branch-like, this wandering nerve um, that starts uh, is a cranial nerve that starts in the head and even goes all the way down into the gut, and our nervous system can become conditioned to stress in the same way that our bodies can, um, in the same ways that our minds can. I mean. There are so many people, um, myself uh, occasionally included in this, which is almost that it's like if you're not worried, then you're worried about what you should be worrying about, right? Like if you're so used to worrying, um, it almost feels uh, too strange to not be worrying. Um, and we can get into these types of patterns in our nervous system as well. And so what we're going to do here is just something that's a bit like a circuit breaker um, for for the nervous system. Um, the first thing we do is just a little measuring stick. So we're just getting we're just gauging where we are right now. So we're going to sit up nice and tall, close the eyes, and then slowly turn the head to one side. And just notice how far it goes, where the tension points are, how it feels. And then turn your head back through center and over to the other side. And again, just notice how far it goes, where it stops, where you feel the tension. And already just checking in like this is a great way to check in with yourself um, throughout the day. So if you're no, if, if you're starting to think, oh, I'm getting really stressed, let me check in. How's my neck? How are my shoulders? Um, and if they're feeling very pent up, that might be a moment to consider some self-care of um, just even a five minute stretch. Um, or if you like this exercise that we're about to do, this is also something you can do. It just takes a few minutes, three minutes. So now that we've checked in, we're going to again come on to the back. Okay. And then interlace the fingers behind the head. Okay. So once you've got the fingers interlaced behind the head, likewise, bend your knees with your feet on the floor. It's okay to let the legs uh, drop together. That's fine. Um, you want to be comfortable here. And imagine that there is a puppet string from your nose to the ceiling and it's taut and we want to avoid turning that puppet string. We're going to keep that puppet string nice and straight, okay? Um, so the only thing that's going to move here are your eyes. And again, it can feel really bizarre if you've never done this before and it can feel a little uncomfortable because just like if you suddenly took up running tomorrow and you've never been running before, your body would ache a bit. It's the same idea here. Um, if you're doing something with your eyes you've never done before, they might kind of be like, oh, um, what the, what is this? But it's fine. Um, discomfort in yoga is really fine. It's pain that we want to, to avoid. So what we're going to do now is, it, again, it feels really silly if you're not used to this. We're going to take the eyes to the far right corners as much as possible. Again, um, leaving the head totally at center, okay? And it can feel like you're getting into a weird cross-eyed position with, with the far eye. And I just want you to hold that. And you can blink and... Also, just allow for any responses that your body naturally has. So if you start to yawn, swallow, sigh. And just take some nice deep breaths here. We'll do this a few more seconds. Typically, you want to do this exercise from 30 seconds to one minute on each side. And then 
bring the eyes back to center. And just allow for any natural responses. Again, if you feel like sighing, yawning, swallowing, taking a deep breath, these are all normal responses. And then again, keeping your nose at center, nice top puppet string. We're going to take the eyes over to the left. And just hold that there, keep breathing into it. Again, you're welcome to blink. Just try to maintain that, that far gaze to the left. Bring it back to center. And again, just allow for any natural responses that come to you. And then from here, just take the knees into the chest, take your hands up to your knees, cross your ankles. And once more, roll yourself up to seated. And then once you come up to seated, close your eyes. And again, just start to turn your head in one direction and notice any sensations, if the sensations have changed, if the head goes further. And then take it back through center and over to the other side. And take it back to center. And for some people, this can be a really profound shift um, for others, maybe your nervous system is actually pretty chilled out right now <laughs> and, uh, and it's okay and you don't need it, um, that's fine. But if it is something that resonates for you, just file it away. It's a really easy thing to incorporate into every day, um, just a few minutes every day. Um, and again, I'll put this video up on, on YouTube so you can easily access it if you kind of forget the exact details. Um, all right, so just coming towards the end of the session now, I'd just like to invite you one last time to come down onto your back, okay? And when you come down onto your back, you can use a blanket or a pillow and you can just stretch yourself out, ugh and start to just wiggle your way down. And then relax your shoulders. Relax your hands. Close your eyes and take a few last deep inhales through the nose with exhales sighing or blowing the air out of the mouth.
And once you've sighed out a few times, just let your natural breath take over. Feel your eyelids become heavy over your eyes. And just feel your body start to melt down onto the ground. So just becoming nice and heavy there. And as you relax here, I'd like you to, again, bring yourself back to this idea of how you might be speaking to yourself. And maybe just come up with one or two affirmations that you can say to yourself in these coming days. So whatever we practice, we get better at. So if we practice tearing ourselves down, um, saying unkind things to ourselves, unfortunately, we do get better at, at continuing those practices of, of saying these things to ourselves. But likewise, if we start to practice saying kind things to ourselves, lifting ourselves up, building ourselves up the same way we would a loved one, then likewise, over time, that also starts to get easier um, and as we practice that, and it starts to become more ingrained. So maybe your, your affirmation this week could just be, I am grateful and it could be, I am grateful for something particular. It could just be, I am grateful. It could be that I have a beautiful, um, I have a beautiful body, which is a really hard one for a lot of people to say. Um, but that's all the more reason to practice it. And just these are ideas, but it's just whatever resonates for you. At the end of the day, your intuition um, will guide you far better than what I could. So try to just think of maybe one or two things you might start to practice saying to yourself this week, as silly as it might sound. Then just draw the awareness again back into your breath. Deepen the breath. Bring some movement back into your fingers and into your toes. And then gently Roll to one side. And then bring yourself all the way back up to seated. Once you come back into seated, bring the hands into prayer in front of the heart. Remind yourself of those affirmations, those words that you might begin to practice this week. You might even want to write them down after the session. And just remember that if you totally forget this and you don't ever do it again, it's okay. <laughs> There's no need to beat yourself up with this too, okay? Just, it's just one exercise. And then gently bow, honoring your body, your light, your practice on this earth. And thank you all so much for coming this evening. Um, please do feel free to, to tell um, any others that you think might benefit from coming to these sessions about them. I think there's still some hiccups in um, 
getting the word out about needing to sign up on my my website each week um, and that again is just because we had a a zoom bomber um, a few a few months ago um, so so yeah um, so that's it for for today's session um, but hopefully um, see you next week and please um, just take care of yourself and that's it <laughs> thank you guys uh, so much um, 